Hey guys, my name is Kendrick and welcome to ENFP Mail. Today I get to interview Mina and I cannot pronounce your last name. How do you pronounce your last name? <laughs> oh, no, man. But you don't need to use it. Nobody uses it in, in the internet. It's absolutely useless. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds good. So uh, Mina, awesome to have you here. I'm uh, looking forward to um, <clears throat> actually uh, interviewing you. I, I saw some of your videos with Benjamin and I thought, you know, that was an absolutely amazing example of self-awareness when I saw that video. So I was really excited to, uh, to interview you because it was so good. Um, so Mina, you are an ESFP, but uh, what, Basically, yes. but what is your op type? Like what is your exact breakdown? Exact type is FMSETE, play, consume, sleep, blast. So blast, blast and extroverted jumper. ESFP. And how did you feel when you got your result? back after getting typed um well i had it easy since shannon actually called me and um explained the whole thing how they came to that result i think she needed to do the final checkup on me that they got me right and um i did think that i was organized over gather but apparently it's because of my masculine and i at the bottom so Yes, I can be very controlling, but it's not in the savior state. And uh, it didn't take me maybe a few hours to actually realize that, like, of course, that's how it is. And, um, I don't have very long history with MBTI, so I think that helped. I just accepted. This is how OP sees me. Sounds good. And then... Can you, can you talk about like what that demon NI looks like when it comes out? Because you said you can be controlling when it comes out as like a demon, right? So. Yeah, well, I, I'm not that? personally very aware of it. So I'm going to rely on what other people have told me it looks like. It's um, basically, well, ba you have demon intuition. So occasionally, not all the time, sometimes you just can't see behind the corner. You sort of get so stuck in the, in the sensory in the moment to the gathering of all the facts before you actually rely on the pattern. You sort of know the pattern is building there, but you're still not trusting it. So that's one aspect. But the controlling aspect is probably just since the NI is masculine, in my head, all the plans, all the abstract, what has been said, it becomes like immovable. If, if I've made a deal with someone, it's absolute. You are not allowed to change. Oh, really? <laughs> so, yeah. It's, uh, so in my case, when things change suddenly, like plans or something that ha has been, you, you've talked with someone else before that, hey, let's do this and it doesn't happen for some reason or the circumstances change or whatever that's normally when I, I don't I don't adapt to that change well instead I get stuck in the initial plan but no we weren't supposed to do it this way this what this was what we said this this was going to happen this was supposed to happen that's sort of like the reaction that easily gets surfaced so I'm very careful with it so if you make plans with someone and mm -hmm. it's confirmed for a specific date, then it's set in stone then. Like if they change that plan like last minute, then you would get upset. Basically, yes. I'm not necessarily angry at the person themselves, but I do get like, like a freak out mode about rearranging the whole thing and changing the plan and making the plan again, which I don't want to do because it's uncomfortable we already had a plan why we can't use that <laughs> of course you understand rationally that often there are very good reasons that it just can't be done but your natural reaction is to be immovable with it so to say that's it, is, it, it, is it also because it's like a demon, like your fourth function demon? Because like, you know, you don't want to use it, right? So when you already used it to make that plan mm -hmm. and then you have to use it again, you're kind of like, oh my God, it's such a pain in the ass to use, you know? Or yeah, de definitely. Uh, I, everybody uses NI or any whatever demon or not. But if you are savior sensory, and especially for me, I have single activated. 
demon and I fall. So, oh, it's not like something I actually enjoy doing consciously. I prefer the patterns coming to me naturally in, in time. Same thing. Planning is really not my thing. And I'm, I'm very anti-control. I don't want to tell people what they should do. I don't want other people to tell me what to do. I want things to go organically as they go. I think that's the part of the play aspect. So, um, Dave and Shan type people like um, Joko Willink um, as someone that is a, like an EP and he's like a military guy and he talks about like discipline equals freedom. Do you feel like as someone that's an EP where you are very big into like freedom and you know, I, I want to live my life according to how I want to live it. Um, do you feel like you should apply more discipline into your life so that you can, you know, you can live the life that you want? I definitely think I need more discipline in the sensory, yes. But I don't, I think my issue with control is more on the side of ideologies and what I'm allowed to think or say or feel or whatever. I think that's pretty much since the fear of control is in the abstract realm, I don't mind SI, really. I don't do it much, but I can do it and it doesn't bother me when other people do it or try to imply SI kind of things on me. I also live in a society where, well, let's say the SI rules are very strict, but the sort of the ideologies and you're allowed to think or say whatever you like, basically. So I guess that's also part of it. The culture has enhanced my <laughs> dislike for NI control. So to say. Right, because it's, in, in, I guess in Finland, you guys are, it's okay to think a, cert, a certain way and you can be mm. very liberal in, in the way you think. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you don't have to be, it's not like you're allowed to think what you think. And the free speech is like big thing here. and. Um, and it's a small, a small community after all. It's like whole nation is has the same amount of people as a bigger city in other countries. So it's easy to maintain that kind of community, even if they are all over the place ideologically. So, how many people lives in uh, Finland, anyways? About uh, five million, I think. Oh yeah, that's. Or, uh, Five million, six million, some, somewhere between that. Yeah, that is a small. So there's not that many Finnish people in the world then. Or no, I'm a rarity. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's crazy. I didn't realize that. No, um, no, really, we are quite rare. But basically, we, we're just we're just just the same as well. We are just the mix of Swedes and Russians, so we are that special. Oh, really? So I thought Finnish people are more like. Um, um, what do you call it? Hungarians? Yeah, basically, well, it's a little bit complicated since the original Finns are, yes, but so much people from Russia and Sweden came to Finland during the time that we weren't independent. So basically almost everything, no, no, the, I don't think there is like any hundred percent native old Finnish lines left. All of them have some some Russian or Swedish or Norwegian or, or like in my case, German heritage in them. There is something always. So the, the pure blood Finns have been wiped out? <laughs> yeah, I don't think there is. If there is some, they are probably the Sami people who are their own minority oh, right. aboriginals. That's so uh, let's talk about your, um, your Feminine, extroverted sensing. Then, so w oh, how does that manifest? To talk about it. It's so hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just just give us like a I, I will, I will be right. Okay, you don't I, have to I'm talk gonna... about it in detail. Just just no. whatever you can come up with. Well, feminine extroverted sensing is basically what I use to describe it. Is it's like a like a three hundred sixty degree camera yep. that is always on but it has a low focus has low focus yeah so 
it doesn't focus on certain object it sort of just takes everything there is and um, in my case what I do notice is that it's extremely sensitive to sense experiences like noises, visuals, touch, everything like that. So the, like the sensory in a sense state. And, um, and then you gather all the time, even when you don't notice it. And maybe 5% of that data sticks in your mind. Oh, it's wow. Just, it just goes through you. That's how I experience it. Do you ever um, organize any of it in your NI? Yeah, but I, I don't do that consciously, no. I, before I got typed and someone in the MBTI community tried to ask me very profound questions of, about how my mind works. And uh, I tried to explain to them that to me, information comes in, it's, it gets channeled, and then it automatically at some point sorts itself out. So I don't use NI as in, in a way that someone who is concentrating and using NI consciously. To me, it's just the background process that happens on its own. It works quite fine. It just takes a lot of time. I see. That makes sense. And now what about your masculine TE? How does that come out? I, I, I watched your last interview, but I want to hear from you. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, let's say I'm sort of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay clearly my system here isn't working i might have to add some more tape um my te is um, yeah it works well it serves me very well i am mostly a reasonable human being i have a lot of reasons for everything i do or everything yeah. i say yes and um, i st my way through life very proficiently but since it's the extroverted decider and it's immovable, you basically can't expect me to move my stance at all unless I'm willing to move. So if I decide to sort of get my heels on the ground and stay stick with my logical and know this is how it is, you're not able to move me. And on the other hand, I'm also, since my MTE brings also the feminine FI, so that's the identity, that's feelings tied to identity. So my feelings are fluctuable, like, yeah, go all over the place, and I have no control over them most of the time, and I don't want to show them. And then in social situations, if I feel insecure or have some sort of get triggered somehow it doesn't need to hurt Bang. it's like a verbal shotgun like you put your te armor on and then you punch Beep. but it's not quite as cute though <laughs> <sighs> it's yeah. it's really occasionally i do notice myself doing it very I get like super punchy. And with the feminine sensory being this girly as I am, it either makes people laugh at, at first or then you sound like a bitch. Which you probably are in that moment because you probably got triggered or angry or somehow upset totally out of nothing or something that nobody else noticed even. So, <clears throat> It has that side. On the other hand, it's very, very handy. You know, you know to trust your logic. You're not easily moved by the tribe. You do what you see is best, even if you are checking the tribe, what the tribe thinks. You still, still sort of stay your ground, and you can use that power it has in those situations where it's required. That so. Sides and sides. Do you, um, if, if, if you don't mind, do you have any specific stories where you piss someone off with that masculine TE of yours? Yeah, I, um, this is going to be a story where I didn't notice. I don't know how I pissed the person off. But no, it's not a, it's not a good one then. Okay. Well, okay. Something that happened this week, it's 
it's not a very good example though. Um, I was in a group and also my uh, ex-boyfriend was there. And so I've known, known him for years and he's the kind of guy who sort of speaks a lot of stuff that may not actually be true. So okay. he's sort of self-marketing type. Yeah, okay. And, um, I get that. <laughs> and um, then he was explaining how when we still lived together, one of my cats sat on his back when he was doing push-ups. And in about one second after he had said that, in front of everybody, without thinking, I said loudly, when was the last time you ever made push-ups? <laughs> because, and, and added that I've never seen you done one. <laughs> He's not a sporty guy. He doesn't actually do sports. So I was generally a little bit confused when this this happened but only afterwards like a minute after i realized that i came very hard it wasn't like really did that happen nope it was like almost like like guilting him or shaming him him in front of everyone i didn't intend to do so we are in good terms we're friends everything's fine but it just it wasn't true in my opinion yeah <laughs> So, uh, I did apologize to him later, but he clearly was a little bit offended. It's small things like that. It doesn't need to be anything huge. If you make small things like that all around the year, think about it. Someone throws a punch like that three times a week. You're going to take notice at some point, and you're going to get pissed off. You may not say anything because you know it's probably not going to be helpful in the situation anyway to tell that masculine te arsehole that hey you shouldn't do that so i try to be conscious of it by myself sometimes it works you know i when you said that i was picturing all my friends that are females that have masculine mm -hmm. um te or masculine fe and I, I did notice they would say things like that you know out in the yeah. open you know and, yeah. um, and i think especially if you are high on play and you just it just comes you know it it doesn't translate well in my case in english since i actually have to process before i speak because i have to concentrate on what i'm saying to get myself understood for certain but in Finnish, when I'm just going blah, 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 it's, you don't need to think what you're saying and how you're saying it. I'm also absolutely hopeless with controlling my tone of voice. So if, if I had said that in a like, when have you ever done any push-ups? I've never seen that. It would have been a totally different situation. Yeah. But I didn't. Right. <laughs> so it was yeah. it, it was really aggressive it wasn't like a playful like flirty kind of like tone it was like yeah definitely yeah. not totally missed that train yeah. like i was thinking at some point okay this is going to be a funny thing and then just the tone of voice didn't come out and you're like whoops and it's the same thing during the same evening someone else was playing a joke on me or something and i was supposed to say like something like you oh or something i i don't do very well with that anyway it yeah. came so clumsily that they thought that i was actually angry oh really and then i then i had to explain that no 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 that's not it i'm just tired and my my brain is not doing what i'm telling it to do yeah <laughs> even even the little bit it normally does <laughs> so so maybe maybe when you socialize, you just need to speak English then. Just don't speak Finnish. I, I, I'm starting to think that I really need to only speak English from now on because I'm much nicer person than yes. I speak English. I, I'm just not that horrible. You have like a split yeah. personality. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, on the other hand, that part of me is normally in a minority nowadays. Most of the time, I can handle my MTE quite well but I actually even 
may control it too much. I feel in fear of pissing people off and because I've lost a lot of people in my life because of my very <clears throat> bad temper as people tend to describe would, it. Would, would you say more, you have more friends that are guys than females then? As a result of that masculine masculine um, PE? Well, it's hard to say since I don't have very many friends. I've never had many friends. I actually didn't have any friends at all before I was over 20. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. Yeah, bullying stuff and blah, blah, blah. Let's not talk about that. That make, makes people sad. Let's talk about happy things. Um, nowadays, I do have some friends. And um, most of them are female, but it's mainly because... <clears throat> oh, my gosh. I'm not sure if you're, this is socially acceptable to say this, but most of the guys who have been my friends, well, they don't want to be my friend, precisely. And um, if they end up friend-zoned, then it's normally not going very well. So that's the biggest reason I, I would love to hang out with guys. Like at work, I only have male male co-workers and it works absolutely fantastic between us they love the fact that i i don't hold back yeah <laughs> but yeah. Don't, don't worry about saying things socially acceptable this is not a socially acceptable youtube channel so you can sure. say anything that you want but um i i just i just asked that question because um i i have some female friends who have masculine you know t or fe and I noticed most of their friends are guys. Like they said that they cannot make any female friends as a result of that. Like maybe they come across too aggressive, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, Yeah, well, guys, in okay. general, yes, I would say it does affect. If you think about like the very stereotypical female, female French group, no, I will not fit in. In any way, it's not just the masculine PE. I just don't like the same things. I'm not interested to talk with them. Come on, I'm I'm ST to hell. Like if they want to listen to me talk, it's not, yeah. and I'm not interested in their stuff either. But then again, there are different kind of groups. So the French group I'm part of has both male and female people in it, and it works quite well. There is less females than females though now that I think about it. But yeah. Well, the typical female like stereotype would be someone interested in SF, right? So are you, yeah, still, are you still interested in SF? Because, or, to some or degree, but I do it on my own. I don't like to talk about it. Like I don't enjoy talking about makeup. I do makeup. I don't talk about it. That's a totally different thing. But if another girl talks to you about it, do you enjoy listening to them? About talk no. About it? No? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I, I much rather talk about like gaming and stuff. And I'm, I don't, I'm not saying that females don't like gaming. A lot of females do. I just haven't met many of them in recent years anyway. No, because your consume is SF, right? That's why I'm wondering, mm -hmm. like, if you like to consume well, stuff. Well, I do, F do, yes. But I sort of, I think I put all like entertainment into SF category. And I do a lot of like, fantasy and sci-fi related stuff. Oh. I do them myself and I consume a lot of them and um, then there is uh, a lot of documentaries that gets the facts covered so basically you are gathering facts that interest you so yeah I think the SF is much more versatile than we often think it's not just like popularity game it's also like concrete things that you value and concrete things can be information too if it's very tight information I think. I see, I see. Okay, that clarifies a lot of things because I was wondering I was wondering about that. Um what about your feminine FI? How does that like come into play for you? Well it's the fucker that you can see on my face all the time and I don't want you to see it. Yeah. That's that's my feminine FI. Like go the feeling side of me is very uh, fluctuating I don't know if, if I'm pronouncing it right but so I'm not naturally aware of my feelings I actually tend to rationalize 
everything I feel. I don't accept my multiple emotional state unless I have a solid reason to explain where it came from. And if my, often feelings just don't make any fucking sense, do they? So instead of actually processing my emotions or feelings, I rather just pass them <laughs> if I can. Nowadays, I am, of course, more aware, as, as I've explained in many other videos, but it's a conscious process and, and a very uncomfortable one. Also, it requires now me to solve several emotional is issues that I've sort of pushed away for years, years and years. So there is a lot of stuff to go through. But yeah, basically I can go through 15 different emotional states in day, if wow. I have an active day. And it's, most of the time I try to keep it on, under the cover in a way that it doesn't show. But unfortunately, everything I feel can be seen from my face. Like I'm known to be the girl whose face is like this when I don't like something. I it's just it's there no matter what i do unless i'm consciously acting everything i feel will be out in the open in the wow. most awkward demon form ever very childish very it's like imagine you're in a job interview and they say something and you feel insecure and they can see it from your face immediately it actually is a little bit frustrating so that happened to you before in a job interview then where someone said something and you got upset yeah. and then your face changed? Yeah, not necessarily even upset. I just, I became very aware that I'm not suitable for this job. Oh, what job was it? I, I don't know, some sort of call center thing. Oh, I see, I see. Like very <laughs> FE job. And I was like, nope, I'm so going to screw this up if I get this place. You'll punch everyone, <laughs> everyone that calls in. <laughs> Yeah, like the first customer calling on it, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, and no, but yeah, it's um, it is very visible, much more visible than I do realize. Like I, I think I'm even more of a robot than I am. Apparently. Well, you know, they they did say that like feminine fi comes 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 across as fe a lot of times, so. Like maybe, maybe, maybe for you, it's like your, your facial expression, you know, where that like mm. ease coming, coming out, you know? Yeah. But it's, it's so awkward. You know, someone who is savior F, it's not awkward. They've no. done, it, done it all their life and it's, it's where they are naturally at. Yeah. To me, it's like, I don't know. When I'm in social situations and I go through the emotional state, I'm going to act to you how I feel internally. This is how I feel internally. You feel stiff? The awkwardness is just stiff and awkward. And I'm aware of the fact that it all is showing. And of course, when I feel that way, I radiate that feeling to my environment. And people then respond to me accordingly. <sighs> so you, you need people to almost make you feel comfortable first before you can be fluid. But yeah, but the problem is that it's not their responsibility. No, it's not. It's mine. Right. And I'm getting better at it. I met new people last week and I didn't die internally <laughs> either. I'm actually doing these interviews. I'm not afraid of anymore. I wasn't nervous at all today. So I guess some progress has happened. Yeah, that's, so, that's, that's amazing. That's awesome. Um, so you were talking about like you have trouble processing how you feel sometimes, especially in the past, but you do have sleep as your third um, animal and do. so you do have access to it and yes. how are you using it now, now that you're more mature? Well, yeah. well now there is uh, several sort of sleep-like activities I do. There is one that I use to go through all the old trauma and shit that I've been through. That's the first. 
and I go through a list one thing at a time and I go through the feelings of that certain situation or experience one by one until nothing comes out anymore. That's the first. <sighs> Copyright, Shannon Renee. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, then there is um, sort of um, building my identity part, which is where I, I do, everybody has an identity. I'm just very um, excluded from mine. Mine, I, I think I've somehow externalized it even. So since my mind is almost purely visual, so I don't actually have like inner audio or inner, inner monologue at all. So firstly, I had to create one. <clears throat> and uh, the next thing was that I created visually and then added the voice on top of it created a better version of myself, kind of the end goal, the identity I want to end up to be someday. That's sort of that. And I'm processing that and reflecting whether which parts I'm getting right, which when I try something in, the, in reality, then did it work? How did this affect? I look at like a longer period of time. It doesn't help if you look at a week or something. And, um, and then, of course, sometimes I'm just working on some projects of my own, like going through my own story stuff and the comic book, book project, all the plotting and the characters and the world building and everything before I, you have to get it all sorted out inside your mind before you actually go and create it on paper or on, on computer. So you're a, you're a comic book writer or... You, you nah, hobbyists. Not, not pro, hobbyists. Hobbyists. Yeah, it's just a hobby. I, I am pretty decent at illustrating and drawing, but I, I never made it a profession, really. It's, um, but yeah, if I wasn't so lazy and so perfectionistic, I probably would have done it already. But because I keep doing all the all the side stuff like world building and it's a nitpicking, it it's a, at this at this rate it's never going to be ready, or maybe when I'm ninety. So I'm really curious how does how does how does it work for you to be a tester? You know, like, I'm not. I'm visual. You're but you're 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 visual t and tester, right? That's that's oh, what. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does that work for definitely you? Definitely more tester than, as an example, audio or kinesthetic. Um, I don't really understand the tester modality that well yet. So these are going to be purely my observations and my guesses. On, but I guess that is like I. Okay. If I visualize something in my head or not, I've taken information in and I've then created the visual about it. I know what I'm going to do. I, I visualize in my head, okay, this is how it, it's going to go and this is what I'm going to do as an example. Then I go and test it, but I don't have that same kinesthetic feeling to it, like an audio or, or a kinesthetic person has. To me, it's like very soft kind of testing around sort of um, very um, the only word that comes to mind is sensual but I don't mean it in that sense <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's um, it's like everything is very movable still when you're testing it out so there is no like edge in the process. I, I don't know how to describe this. Well. Um, so I, I run, so I, lo I love traveling and I run travel meetups here in, uh, in Vancouver, Canada, where I live. Yeah. I, I had a speaker that come, came in um, last weekend and I feel like he's a tester, like a, he, I, he feels like an FM. I don't know. I don't have any way to prove this, but that's just like kind of like my, my gut was telling me he was. And he was doing a presentation on his travel experience going to Brazil, Argentina, Chile, 
and Bolivia and South America. And he was kind of saying like when he would go to Patagonia and stand in front of nature, he just stands there and kind of like absorbs everything, like everything in his surrounding. He's kind of feeling the experience of being this wonderful big landscape. So when, when he said that, I was thinking to myself, I'm, I wonder if that's what a tester is. Like you're just, you want to feel moved by the experience. You want to feel moved. Like you want something yeah. to move you. Like either the yeah, landscape. It definitely sounds a lot like what I'm trying to explain to you here. Yeah. It is. I think it's the same what I talked about, the, how the feminine sensory in my, in my experience works. It's like it goes through you and you sort of let it pass. So yes. Say, I think that's the same thing like with the tester modality, but you really have to ask someone who is actually a real FF tester to get a better view. I'm so stuck in my visual modality that I, that's pretty much the only one I'm aware of. Yeah. But do you, do you like that feeling though? Like, let's say you're watching a really good movie and you feel really moved by, you know, what, whatever you're experiencing, or maybe you're, do you like, do you like to go hiking and stuff or? Um, no, not really. Um, but, do you like traveling? Do be, no, not really. Not really. Like, okay. <laughs> Not, not in a way like people who actually like traveling do, you know? Yeah, like yeah. You really love it. It's your passion, yeah. almost. To me, not really. I, I like being home. But okay. <laughs> I think it's uh, just because I've trained my brain to do everything in, in the visual. Then I just add what I think it would feel like on top of that. So I was actually talking with uh, one friend of mine who is also into OP, but isn't in Facebook groups or anywhere. So we were comparing, he's, he has masculine sensory clearly, or at least that, that's what we think now. He hasn't been officially tied. And um, <clears throat> he was pondering about one of his uh, mindfulness practices that he's supposed to visualize something and then imagine how it feels when a chilling like beam goes through his spine and, and he said he's having a huge struggle with that exercise. And I, I was like, well, that's not a problem. I can imagine how it feels like. Really? In my body, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard, heard of that exercise like. before. I, I couldn't do it. So that, that's yeah. really interesting. Can you talk about that? Like, how does that feel for you? Well, it feels the same way like someone would imagine coldest water you can have yeah instead on your skin it goes through your spine i can't i cannot imagine it <laughs> no no i'm just i'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, that hard no. <laughs> to me anyway no i think it's, it's so, so, i just think it's fascinating so i, I want to hear about it that's all yeah but it's not like you sort of mix and mash several things you have experienced in your life and then you create a new experience out of it and imagine how it feels like. It's really hard. It's really hard. Like I, I hear, I hear conversations in my head all the time, but it's cause I'm a audio, I'm audio no kinesthetic. No way. Yeah. Like I had to, when I was like 17 or 18, the only kind of inner dialogue I've ever had is that I tried to think in English. Because oh. <laughs> I, I wanted to learn English. I, I absolutely, I was so terrible. I couldn't speak at all. I could write relatively fine, but I just couldn't speak English at all. And so I just started thinking in English. So all the audio I have inside my head ever is always in English now. That's so funny. I've been doing it for like 10 years now. So, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's also, I actually read about people keep telling me I'm so self-aware, which I don't necessarily agree with, but apparently thinking in a foreign language makes you more objective. There is a research about that. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I want to ask you a question on double decider so there's there's two questions i want to ask you about that the first one is uh david shan talked about in some of their videos in the past that double deciders have problems with fear 
while double observers have problems with pain. So do you feel like there's a lot of things in your life that you are afraid of that's kind of holding you back from doing the things that you really want to do in your life? Like, do you feel like you have a lot of fear that kind of lingers? Not maybe fear, but I am very prone to anxiety, which yes. is the same thing. Yes, yeah, it is. So, so can you talk about that then? Yeah. Mm. Most of it is related to like, like, okay, if I had to say something that I'm, what I'm most afraid of, it's an abstract concept that affects one's life in present, and that's loneliness. Okay. So... It kind of makes sense. I'm tribe above self. I don't enjoy being all, all my own all the time. I need the tribe. I feel I need the tribe to support me. And um, then it's an abstract feeling state. You can't make loneliness concrete and understandable in, in a concrete sense. So Yes, I've been through that and it makes it worse because I can tell you it's not nice. But but I think, yeah, I, I'm sort of a... I'm not anxious about sensory things, naturally, since I can deal with sensory. But with, like, things that I feel I can't really control, like like loneliness if you end up being lonely it's very hard to get up and so yeah i do suffer from social anxiety fear of abandonment a lot of stuff like that and um, not as badly as i used to i have a very long line of different kind of mental health issues diagnosed on me and um, it has been a huge load of work to get to the so-called average person state that I'm almost right now so yeah I do see it's hard hard for me to sort of give you a list of all the things I fear because there is a lot or things that I make me anxious. I think future also makes me anxious since I don't really have any big dreams in my life, like what I want to be like. What do I want my life to be? Who I want to be? I never thought of that, really. I just went forward and uh, it never bothered me before I started to realize that people around me had very clear paths they were walking on. Do you think part of your anxiety is not having that clear path kind of to, to, to follow um, moving forward in your life or, or do you think it's, um, is it just plainly from, you know, the fears that you kind of explain, you know, fears of loneliness, fears of abandonment? I think, I think both. Both of it, what I've realized about life in general and about my own own things is that everything I feel, everything I fear, everything I feel happy about, it's all interconnected. They all of them create that that whole. So everything you do, like if like as an example, I my house is absolute wreck right right now. It's so messy. It has never been this messy before in my life. And um, even if I don't pay any t attention to it, it is causing me sort of negative vibe all the time. I don't pay attention to it, but I can at some point realize that, hey, something is building up. And that it's the exact same process with many other experiences in life, how your fears affect you, everything. And what you avoid doing is what you should be doing, so to say. That's really deep. <laughs> um, 
I, I, I completely, I, I completely agree with you. Like, if your surrounding is messy, then that that's could like it could be a reflection of how you feel inside. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree. Um. Have you used your sleep before to kind of explore why you felt like the the things that you felt before? Like, kind of like you talk about fear of loneliness and abandonment. Abandonment. Have you tried yeah. to? Have you tried to reverse engineer that kind of like figure out why do I feel that way? Like, why do that scares me, you know? And then like kind of like, Oh go yeah, there. definitely. I tried many years and eventually I finally found my ways to do it and access that side of my brain, but it took a very long time and I had to go very, very deep before I was able to do, do that. In my case, I'm not sure all my problems are related to type, but a lot of the things can be sort of approached from OP perspective, but alone OP isn't enough for me. So I sort of have to mix many things. I, yes, I do my sleep stuff. And I sort of think that I used to sleep as a, like a funny thing from a very young age. As I said, I didn't really have friends. So what you do when you don't have friends, you, I didn't, I had to, I was supposed to be a, like, pro Taekwondo champion, and then my knee broke, and um, so I sort of spent most of my time on my own at home, writing, drawing, and creating worlds and stuff like that, so I did do some form of sleep, maybe, at least to a small extent, but I wasn't using it for self-growth purposes. So kind of understanding that I can use the exactly same skills that I've used all my life for so many other things, just for my own enjoyment, can be used in a more rigid and more systematic way to solve problems that I'm going through now as an adult. I think that's a very good observation that you made about yourself. Definitely you can use that. You're, you're quite an introverted um, ESFP also. Yeah. Uh, I come off way more introverted in English though. I see. Remi remind me, I will send you, I made uh, a video about myself speaking in Finnish to the blast lasters group when people see, seemed a little bit um, they didn't seem to believe that how much more tense I am yeah in my own native language so yeah. I made subtitles on it you can watch it I'll send yeah it to you. yeah yeah I'll watch it <laughs> sounds sounds good um, so we're gonna wrap up the interview pretty soon so I have uh, two final things I'm gonna ask you so the first one is um, do you have any message to any one of similar type as you, someone that has a, you know, masculine decider, uh, external decider, and, um, you know, uh, savior gatherer like you are, you know, ESFP, and about anything that you've discovered that used to cost you a lot of tidal waves, but you've now kind of, I always say control it, but it's less, and you feel more balanced as a result of you know, keeping those demons in check. Okay. So I'm going to take a risk. I, I haven't really processed this sure. word yet. But um, since I've had my fair share of identity issues in my life, and what I keep seeing in personality community a lot with people who struggle with identity, is that people keep searching for something to latch on to, something they can identify with, something that makes them sort of search, searching themselves. This is the thing. If you have demon identity and you struggle with it, you're not going to find your identity. You need to build it by yourself. No personality type, no line of code, no Enneagram type, Nothing is going to tell you who or what you are. You are what you are and what you made yourself make yourself to be. Sure, you may have a baseline, you may have a core programming, but 
that's not all you are. And latching yourself to something external is only going to make the process harder later. I guess that's something. You know what? That's, that's really well said. And I, I don't think that advice that you just said is just for people with, you know, feminine identity. I think that is valid for everybody because, you know, people tend to latch on the external, like, you know, knowing your type, you start to identify with it when clearly you don't have to identify with it completely and you're still you and you can. Yeah. And um, you, I don't you know. know if it's actually, if you are only in personality community yeah. to identify with something. You're in the wrong place, dude. You, it's supposed to be a growing tool. Yeah. I underline the word tool. It doesn't make you anything. And it doesn't change other people's perception of you in any way. You're yeah. still you. They will still see you first. So I guess this... I, I never actually thought about it since I didn't spend much time in MBTI community. So I didn't think that there was anything weird being ESFP. Only later on did I find out that there is some sort of bias. <laughs> oh, definitely so, there is. <laughs> so a lot of people who get typed by some external source as SC leads don't seem to want to be one, which is odd to me. But I personally don't mind. Oh, that's good that you ac you accept yourself, you know. What however, is there you... not to accept? Yeah. Um, final question for you is, um, I'm an ENFP, so do you have any questions for me that you don't understand about, like, functions that I have that you don't have? So I have NE and I have SI, and we both have FI and TE, right? So do you have any questions about NE or SI that makes absolutely no sense to you and you would like to learn more about? How do you personally experience your NE? Like, you know, I'm going to narrow this down, down a bit. Um, if we use the OP description of gathering concepts, how do you like experience, experience it internally? How, it, how does it come to you that experience? So a few days ago, I was taking a shower and uh, while I was taking a shower, something came out of my head out of nowhere. I don't know where it came from, but it was like an idea for, um, for a video that I wanted to make. And I, I created a storyline in my head of how the video was going to happen. Um, like I said, I, I, like, as I mentioned to you before, I can hear conversations in my head all the time. So I vividly heard like a very in-depth like, conversation in my head between two um, I'm not going to go into detail because I might actually execute in this because I think it's really funny. So it's, I, I created a comedic scene in my head of like these two things talking to each other. And I even had a punchline end, which is going to be like the funny punchline, right? Like something unexpected that um, people, won't, um, people won't see. Now, the, the crazy thing is that there was no logical way for me to explain how these thoughts came to my head. It just appeared. Like it was a flash almost. Like it was there. And now I have this idea of a storyline that I can use for a video. And it's very playful. It's very comedic. Um, and I think the best way to explain how it is, have you seen the, the cartoon Family Guy? Yeah. You know, like, you know, in the cartoon, they'll be talking one minute and the next minute they go into this, this random scene that is completely unrelated to. Yeah, whatever. but is it the creator like... Uh, INFP or something or FINE or something. Yeah, well, I mean, on 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 the on the on the docs, he Seth MacFarlane was type as an INFP, which is weird because long time ago in the old Dave Superpower stuff, he typed him as an ENFP, right? So it's kind of weird that he became an INFP, but he, whatever it is, it doesn't matter because the fact is he's still using that NE, right? Um, and the way he did that was kind of like the best way for me to explain how I created the storyline in my head. It came out of nowhere. It's completely random, yet it's still connected in a very distant way. Like, it's not an obvious connection, right? Like, I don't know what a good example of an obvious connection is, but... No, it's a very good example because as an... Ex well, I don't do comedic scenes, but I do stories. And in my case, yes, I may get scenes, but they always sort of build up very slowly. 
it's like one part of the, at the time or then it's it goes very linearly so to say so my intuition works in a very in a straight rail yes yes it doesn't jump at all yeah it, it, so, it, yeah. It, intuition is more uh, extrovert intuition is more like a web so yeah. do you watch game of thrones always, always yeah yeah did you watch last episode that, that, that yes. makes, oh my god it's so good <laughs> Yeah. So when I was watching that last episode, I can clearly backward rationalize kind of like how how the author, I think the author's an INFP, um, and kind of like how he linked every single part of that final scene into something that happened a long time ago. Yeah. So it's, it's as yeah, if... Yeah, the yeah. foreshadowing is like big on Game of Thrones. So I think that's an aspect that probably speaks to people with Savior and a lot. Yeah, definitely. I keep I keep forgetting the foreshadowing, so it always comes as a surprise to me. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, <laughs> what I what I loved about it is that it was so it was so well done that even it threw off my ne because I usually I can predict what's gonna happen next, and I'm really good at predicting what's gonna happen next. It's so it's kind of annoying um, that I know what's gonna happen next all the time. Like any show I watch, I already like ah, oh, this is gonna happen. Who are you for being so smart? Yeah, yeah. How can yeah. you deal with your life? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sucks being so smart. But anyways, mm -hmm. <laughs> but look, you know, but like when when Game of Thrones threw me off, I was like, "This is this is great. This is awesome." You know, like I I did not expect you know the end scene to happen, and you know I'm not gonna spoil it to anyone. You know, I'm gonna get yeah, me neither. Yeah. But I'm going to I'm going to pick up my NI now. I actually guessed some things. Some of it. Ago. Yeah, oh, I nice. predicted what's going to happen in this this part of the story, and I was yeah. right. Oh, nice, nice. So, in your ass, everybody who says that Savior SC can't use an eye. Yes, we yeah. can. Maybe the, it can yes. maybe, <laughs> maybe the masculine ones, the masculine and I. Yeah. And, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Mina, it was great interviewing you. Um, I had yeah, thank you very blast. much. It has, yeah. been very, it has been a blast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's a good joke. All right, so I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to stop recording right now. <clears throat> So okay. I'll, I'll wait bye to everyone first. So bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for... Bye.